it is, it is a no, time like this is in Canada. But, uh, at the moment, yes. But look at um, all of us doing something about it, essentially. Um, and that's, that's ties into the latter question about uh, sustainability and, um, uh, and the world having finite resources. And also, just cutting down our energy use. And the problem is, at the moment, our uh, energy um, use has gone up rather than down. So it's flattened off during the uh, global financial crisis. But it's now generally going up again. And the forecasts are flattened, thanks for 40 degrees global warming by um, the end of this current century. And some people say the Kyrgyz may only have 50 or 60 years to go. Um, and then, certainly, I think. Yeah, it's, it's going to get worse and worse. It's just no doubt about it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be as pessimistic as that. Um, mm -hmm. The reason I say that is because of the Kiribati government and the Kiribati people aren't. Um, if you look at it with our eyes from here, I think you would say that. You know, but if you look at it from the fact of how they've been able to sustain themselves in some of the most difficult country for, over, for thousands and thousands of years, um, they are very adaptable. Now within Kiribati, you've got the, the, the Lion Islands, you have the Phoenix Islands and the Gilberts where Taro is. Um, now there's the big island the Christmas Island, which is the biggest island of the group, which is over south of Hawaii, which is actually part of the nation. Now, there's a, you know, it's a very dry part of, of, of the country, but it is a place where people could move. Um, there are the options of not just, uh, if you feel like this is a political argument, we've got the present, of course, like a virtual sovereignty. Uh, if we go down the scenario that Tom's just outlined, you say, okay, 60 years from now, there won't be, there'll be a whole lot of Kiribati missing, but there still will be quite a considerable pieces of Kiribati still there, even in the worst case scenario. It can't support the current population, but it can support some population. What the President is saying is that these people get trained and move around various parts of the region. Sovereignty will still be held in that country, even though people might have dual citizenship living in Fiji or living in Australia or living in New Zealand. So it's keeping the culture alive whilst the location option is the worst case scenario. What they want to do is mitigate and adapt and they want the world to, to basically say, well, you know, we, you have to change to, to help us survive. Now in terms of the UN question, when the President went to the UN, he was invited to a meeting with President Obama, President of France, of course, the ex-President of France, Sarkozy, Angela Merkel, which has a good journey. Um, the then uh, Prime Minister of Britain, I think it was uh, Gordon Brown at this stage. Then you had Kevin Rudd. And they sat around the table with the President of Kiribati, the President of Tobago, the President of Nauru. And they, they talked about how they could mobilise the resources if there was a political will to do it. Now, going into Copenhagen, everyone wanted and explain them the form of legally binding agreement. And if that happened, that would be able to limit greenhouse emissions to the sorts of areas that the Kiribati people would like, then we, the, the scenario that we, we're painting here would span out another 50 or 60 years. And who knows where science and technology might be in 125 years. Um, so, there are, so the point is here is the mobilization of the political will. And I was staggered and disgusted to find out that the Australian government had rolled out our high commissioners and our ambassadors around the, the region to put the heavy on Tuvalu, to put the heavy on Kiribati, to put the heavy on other Micronesian states and tell them to shut up at, at, uh, the, at the UN Convention. We want a, as opposed to what they said in the meeting with all the presidents, we want a political outcome that they could basically sell the Australian people and keep Alan Jones happy. Know, and said, and we walk away from the commitment we made to the Kiribati people. And that was a disgraceful thing to do. And I think, you know, there's no surprise that if that's the issue that brought Kevin right down. So back to away from the promises that were made. So I think if we could mobilise the political will and listen to the Kiribati people, and ultimately what they want in the interest of all of us, was Kiribati to be like the thin, the line in the sand on the issue of climate change. It starts there. It's going to end in Manhattan. You know, the, if you look right around the world, the science is in, despite what Alan Jones says. <laughs> Although, in my view, if Alan Jones says that you can get London to a brick, it's probably wrong. You know, 
I'd rather hear you back Alan Jones or back the internet, but not in 9% of the science community in the world. Um, so it seems to me that we're all in this. They're at the head of the queue. And it behoves all of us to take the issue a bit more seriously than we have, I guess. Yeah. Well, I've got a lot of hope the world will because it's inevitable. The question is when. Uh, it's inevitable that the world will come to, this type of, to the table on this. The question is when they will. You see, it, 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 you can easily say, well, we could be like 8, 110,000 ET mass people. We can do that. We can absorb the universe. Yeah. We can absorb 11,000 two balloons. No problem. We're going to put 135 million Bangladeshis live out on shoulder bones. Where are the You see, this is, this is an issue that involves all of us. And, you know, Tony Abbott and, you know, Julia, Julia Gillard said this, they'll come and go. This issue won't. And, you know, I, I grew up spent all of my life growing up in the terrible I can see where the beach has gone from, from there to where it used to be. And that's, you know, just, you go up to Old Bar in Taree, you can see where the beach used to be where it's not now. You go to Kiribati and multiply that by 100. But it seems to me the politicians in this country you know, really need to get with the program. It's, it's not a question of do I have hope? I hope that it will, it will be on the agenda. The question is when. We're wasting time on the moment. But no, it, the film has been screened widely here, uh, certainly um, at the film festivals and we've had screenings in Bathurst and Byron Bay and Cape Bath, Launceston, yeah, every time we see it. And uh, there was a shorter version of the film which was shown on, on, on SBS uh, last year. Um, so it's, it's been a very encouraging response. <laughs> we all met, yeah, as a filmmaker, I do spend oh, Quite a while after the film's made, we push it out there. Um, but there's also other people that, that help and assist. Um, and I um, actually think um, the next plan, and that's going to happen quite soon, is that the film will be available on demand, the on demand, in the next couple of months. They say that the, the definition of someone who's really famous is when they're known by their first name. You know, so it um, usually applies to footballers or you know, you know, just someone like that, you know their first name. Well, if you're out in Kiribati and you're walking around the streets and you say, I'm a Tom, everyone knows what you're saying. <laughs> you know, everybody knows what you're saying. But, but also, you know, I've been involved with a lot of documentary making over the years, different phases and different things. But Tom actually really went there, met the people, stayed with the people, you know, slept on the floor in different villages and then kept going back. You know, you don't get invited in to people's lives if you just flip through and shove a camera in their face. Um, so I, I think that was really great. Okay. I'd just like to say that the thing that really impresses me about it is the depth of um, what you've shown on, on, uh, in terms of people's lives. You know, it, it's not just the issue that you've really um, shown people's lives in a very real I really want to thank you for that because he is very moving. Um, has have you had any good response from the Australian government? Anything positive? Off the record, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're very bright off the record. <laughs> <laughs>